Hello, everybody. Welcome to What Does the uh, What Does the Bible Say? I was going to kind of make a joke there, but I guess I'm going to let go. I stumbled over myself. Uh, you don't have to change your channel. You don't have to check your calendar. It is Thursday night. I know Caleb would usually uh, be on, but due to some uh, technical issues last night at the uh, Martinsville station and then uh, just not having a, enough time to deal uh, with the information that I was wanting to embark upon towards the end of the program, uh, Caleb was gracious enough to let me have his hour so that we can deal with this information properly and basically we're just going to give a full hour on what does the Bible say to uh, dealing with uh, these issues. As you know, we are also associated with Religious Review. Oftentimes, Religious Review is involved in going out and being involved in investigating denominational affairs. We you know, go to these different gospel meetings. We run up issues that are going on inside the denominational churches. Uh, just whatever is happening in the religious world, Religious Review is trying to make sure that they are involved in it. And unfortunately, sometimes Religious Review, uh, ourselves in the Church of Christ, we have to do some investigation on our own brethren. And uh, I believe that many of you that are familiar with our program, that you've been watching the shows uh, for the past two, three years now, I suppose, are well aware that we are not partial when it comes to matters of judgment and making sure that all individuals are following what the Bible says. We will talk about the denominational folk and we'll talk, we'll deal with our own brethren because as we've been discussing, we are concerned about everybody's souls. We have love for our brethren and love for those that are out in the denominational world, making sure that everybody is following through as, as what they're needing to be doing. And this evening, though the information we're going to be dealing with is you know, primarily dealing with situations within the Lord's Church, uh, in particular dealing with higher levels of education, our universities. As you can see here, we're going to start with an article from the Huffington Post. What we're finding out is this is playing a, it still involves, you know, very heavily with our denominational friends in helping them to realize that we, you know, we're trying our best to have an influence on the denominational world, but what we're finding with our religious universities, our religious institutions in the higher education, you're in fact having some sway in these regards and it's not helping anybody. It might be the case in the, in the denominational realm that you would think, well, let's, you know, we, we try to have this intermingling back and forth. We have to try to have this tolerance and everything's going to end up working out. But in fact, what, what we're going to find out from our universities is exactly what has been presented on this television program and in our sermons and different things like that, that if less Christians, members of the Church of Christ, as we've been presenting, the only Christians that you read about in the Bible are members of the Church of Christ. If Christians are not going to be the uh, majority and they're not going to be the strong influence in any community, whether it be where you live or where, as we're dealing with these universities and those type of communities, those in the denominational realm, they're going to end up wrecking what, you know, what is uh, <laughs> holding some potential good. So let's deal, let's deal with this this evening. Christian colleges struggle with their fine art programs. Now, when we're discussing this idea about fine art programs, we're not talking about, you know, per se, I mean, I mean, we're, we're, de we're dealing with college level art. We're not talking about art in middle school or anything like that, where you might be, you know, drawing these uh, steel images. I remember when I was in middle school and I had to take art, we're drawing baskets of fruit, we're drawing these squares, we had these little wooden mannequins that we would put into different positions and you know if you had some talent in that area which I did not then you're supposed to you know try to uh, you know draw that as best best that you can we're not discussing that type of you know that type of art we're talking about in the other realms of what would be classified as uh, you know true art historical art and uh, you know based upon really just a, a worldly standard of what uh, these artists are portraying and what they are in fact trying to do with our our Christian colleges. Now in this article with the Huffington Post, this is not a brotherhood paper. This, this is just a news agency that is involved out in the you know out in the world. But it's interesting how that in 2011, 2011 this information comes out from you know from Huffington Post and they are even realizing that within the religious realm, the religious realm is having a hard time dealing with this situation in the fine arts program. Now, why, why is this an issue? Uh, let me see if I can try to get this where I can stand properly. You'll be able to read it. That's good. 
When Bob and Sandra Bowden were scouting colleges for their daughter Jennifer in the 1980s, they found that pickings were slim. My, quote, my husband and I were looking for a Christian college with a studio art program, and it was like looking for a needle in a haystack. Miss Bowden recalled, the couple wanted a church-affiliated college because we have a Christian home, they said. Although a studio art program was their daughter's choice, although the options that fulfilled both requirements were limited. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's what we want to hone in all, on when we're discussing this, this art problem. We're not just talking about in any realm of art. We're talking about studio art, and that's in a, you know, an entirely uh, you know, different level and an entirely different realm. And it's this type of art that's having uh, you know, a, a tough time in coming into Christian, uh, Christian schools and Christian colleges, and this is, here's the reason why as we go on in the, in the article. Since, since the 1980s, however, the situation has changed dramatically. A fifth of the 105 members of the U.S. Council for Christian Colleges and Universities now have studio art degree programs. So in 1980, they were having a hard time, or excuse me, in the 19, let's see, let me go back and find out when they were trying to do that. In the 1980s, there were, there was very slim. However, it's double the number come the 1990s. And it's, again, this studio art. Well, what are we dealing with? One of the reasons for this increase is the 70% growth in enrollment at Christian institutions since 1990, outstripping the 15 to 20% jumping in other parts of the university sector. As with the Bowden family, there's evidence that parents are encouraging their children to attend Christian colleges, while students themselves are choosing to study art in increasing numbers. The surge in enrollment has left church-based institutions engaged in a delicate balancing act, training young artists. It says in this article that it ends up being a touchy subject. Now, why is that? Notice what we have here. Another key difference between Christian and secular art training are the school critics or critiques. As Jim Zingaleri, chair of the art department at Golden College in Massachusetts said, we are always asking, how does your Christian faith inform your work? Are you debasing or speaking of the beauty of the human form? So what are we dealing with in these art studios? We are dealing with the human form. Paintings of nudes may or may not be acceptable. That's what we're discussing when we're discussing studio art. And even in uh, the other portions of this uh, article, I'm realizing that would be uh, helpful for us. Let me see if I have it in my internet browser. I'm pretty sure that I do. Uh, let's see here. Huffington, I thought that I did. But anyways, in this article, it actually talks about how that the Christian colleges have different standards from secular colleges and how that they are not going to allow nude models to come in and to pose for these pictures. Now, see, that's, that's the issue that we're discussing here when we're discussing Christian colleges struggling with their fine arts department. You might be, you know, you might be sitting at home and thinking to yourself, well, art, what's so difficult about you know, accommodating art classes you know, for these young Christian folk? because the type of art that universities are saying that is supposed to be depicted as professional art and in order to train these young people so as to be involved in professional art, something that you can actually be involved in and uh, make a living off of, has to deal with studying the human form and being able to reproduce pieces of art supposedly that depict the human form, whether you're being fully nude or partially nude. And this is something that the universities in the world realize, okay, if you're going to have an art degree, this is what you have to do. If the Christian schools are going to be able to uh, keep up with the secular schools and be able to pull in the students that want to be involved in this type of art, then this is part of the accreditation. And notice, as we mentioned, notice here what it says. I'm going to try to zoom in here for you on the screen what's actually happening. It has left church-based institutions engaged in a delicate balancing act. Well, what are we going to do about this? Well, we have students coming in that want to be involved in art, but if we're actually going to give them an art degree, studio art is involved in that, and you have to you know, be involved uh, with reproducing nude or partially nude images. And it has them, you know, it says in a balancing act, trying to train young artists. It says right here, it's a uh, touchy, it ends up being a touchy subject in these institutions. 
But the thing about it is, is we understand from what the scriptures say that, you know, there really is no balancing about, about this situation. If we, you know, being members of the Lord's church, and maybe even some of you in the denominational realm, you're looking at this, and this is, I mean, so even right here, this is good learning for those in the denominational realm, that in the Church of Christ, we do not give over to the idea that certain artists like Michelangelo or, you know, I'm, again, I'm not <laughs> up on all the artists and uh, things like that, but, you know, those type of individuals from the Renaissance that would be involved in painting some of the classical art that people would consider that, oh, this is just a masterpiece, but it's involved in promoting nudity, that's not art. That is something that is, in fact, condemned by what the Bible actually says. I mean, you got all those um, nude statues over in the Vatican. That's not art. They are nude. They are in, it's, they're naked. It's in modesty. It's supposed to be um, shameful to be involved in these type of practices. So let's, let's put some, some Bible perspective onto this. As we're looking at this, members of the Lord's Church, and we're, look, we're looking at and we're, we're considering what the Huffington Post is saying, we're saying, well, you know, what's the big deal? What, you know, what is there to balance? Romans chapter 12, verse 2, as I was thinking about this, came to mind, be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. All right, if they're claiming to be a Christian college, fine, give them, you know, there are classes, but leave, you know, leave the nudity out of it. Just take that part out. Don't even, you know, what, what is there to balance? What is there to be touchy about? We're supposed to be in the world, but not of the world. Do not conform, but we are being transformed by the renewing of our mind. Learning what God says about our body, clothing it, protecting it, guarding it, and not just flaunting it, or, you know, flaunting it about. How that God says that we're supposed to be a modest people. If they're claiming to be Christians, they ought not to be involved in, in modesty, lasciviousness. As Paul would write you know, uh, to, to different brethren. So, you know, we're looking at this in the Church of Christ and we're thinking, well, that's, that's no big deal and that's just down in the denominational realm. You have 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16 and, uh, 17 and 18. Paul is writing to the brethren here at Corinth about, you know, dealing with uh, idolaters and different things of that. He says, wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate. So there again, not conforming, being transformed, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you and will be a father unto you and shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. We're not supposed to be getting closer to the world and letting them have an influence on us and sway us as to what art is and let them determine to us as to you know, what it is that we are going to you know, force upon these young people that they have to study if, in fact, it goes against what our, what our convictions are. I mean, we still have passages like in Exodus chapter 20, 25, and 26 dealing with nudity. I mean, how does God feel about covering covering his people. Well, here's with the priest in the Old Testament. If thou wilt make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hewn stone. For if thou lift up the tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. And notice this about building the altar. Neither shalt thou go up by steps unto mine altar, that thy nakedness be discovered thereon. And it's later, I believe, maybe just two chapters. Two chapters later, you have God through Moses telling to the uh, children or to uh, the Levites, to the priesthood, you're supposed to have breeches underneath, you know, underneath your coat, underneath your robe. For what purpose? So that you're covering yourself. Nobody's needing to see your nakedness. But what do we have going on in these Christian colleges? Christian colleges. Well, they're struggling with their art department because the art department is saying, oh, if we're going to give our students what they really need so as to be trained as true artists, we're going to have to sway a little bit. We're going to have to balance on what the Bible actually says about nudity and allowing them to see nudity. In Isaiah chapter 47, verses 2 and 3, you have uh, prophecy being mentioned about uh, the virgins of Babylon. And uh, the prophet says, Take the millstones and grind meal, uncover thy locks, make bare the leg, uncover their thigh, pass over the rivers. And notice what it says about this. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. So in the church of Christ, in the churches of Christ, we're looking at this and we're saying, look, to be naked is to be a shameful thing. Now, our bodies are to be respected and they're to be enjoyed within the realms of marriage. But now, you take a group of young people who are 
number one, not being properly trained up in what the Scriptures say based upon their doctrine and beliefs. I mean, number one, they're being told that you're born in sin, that you only are able to be saved if God works on you, and then if God works on you, He's supposed to work on you in such a way that you're not supposed to fall. Now, you take that type of background and you put them in a situation where that is in their mind, and then you insert them into this class where they're seeing nakedness all the time, then what are you, what are you going to run into? You're going to run into problems. I mean, Paul told Timothy, I believe it's in 1 Timothy chapter 3, that he's supposed to flee. Well, not just him, but I mean, all individuals, all Christians, true Christians, as the Bible says, are supposed to flee youthful lust. But what do we have going on in these Christian schools? They're placing lust right out there, uh, right out there in the midst of their classes, in their art classes, in these studio art classes, where in training these young artists, you have to see and recreate nude or partial nude. Now the Christian schools are saying, well, we're not bringing in nude models, but we're just having them recreate these pictures that have nudity in it. Well, there really is no difference. Nudity is nudity, whether it's you know, standing in front of you or whether it's on a printed page. It's all nudity and it's all to be ashamed. I, as I was thinking about it on the way up here, we could have used Adam and Eve in the, in the, in the garden in Genesis chapter 3, 2 and 3, how it says that they were naked, but what? Before they ate the fruit. They were naked, but they were not ashamed. What is being naked supposed to produce outside of the realms of marriage? It's supposed to produce shame. But what do we actually have going on inside of these Christian colleges? Well, let's just, let's just flaunt it out there in the sake of art. Remember what the article said? Are you, uh, let's see here. It's right here. We're always asking, how does your Christian faith inform your work? That's the first question. Are you debasing or speaking of the beauty of the human form? So you see what they're trying to do? They're trying to, they're trying to kind of mull it over and say, well, you know, we're not trying to do like, we're not trying to debase God's creation. We're trying to beautify God's creation. Listen, I don't care what you're trying to do. You're going to have to find some scriptural evidence, some scriptural authority that would give you, to, you know, the opportunity to be involved in that type of training and presenting that type of material. When the Bible talks about purity, when he would write, when Paul writes to the Thessalonian brethren and, and encouraging them how they ought to uh, use their vessel or protect their vessel, referring to their body and abstaining from fornication. And in fact, I believe that was one of the next passages on the on the PowerPoint. What about fornication and adultery? I mean, do we still not have written for us in the Bible? Matthew 5, 27, you have heard that it was, was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery, but I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So here are Christian colleges, so-called Christian colleges. Now, I have that in parentheses because the Huffington Post, I'm sure they're not covering. Well, and that's, <laughs> that's leading us into our next segment. Though you might be thinking to yourself, well, the Huffington Post, they don't have in mind any of our brotherhood schools. I wouldn't be so sure about that. You might be sitting at home thinking, well, this is, you know, the, the Baptist seminaries and the, the, you know, the Methodist schools or something like that, and they're having this issue about bringing in, you know, these, these, uh, this uh, studio art and these art classes and dealing with nudity. Well, let's just consider this evening. Is this a problem in our, and I have in quotations, our for a reason. Is this a problem in our Christian universities? Because I know there are brethren, they're probably sitting back and they're thinking there's no way that this is going on. With everything that the Bible has to say about remaining pure, being pure in heart. I mean, right there, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Now, how are you supposed to stay, stay pure in heart if you're in a studio art class and you have nudity being presented to you? I mean, I would, if I were in an art class and I'm having to deal with this, I don't know how long it takes to, to draw a certain thing, but I was thinking you'd have it flashed before you on a daily basis, and really that would be the case depending on how long it takes you to draw whatever it is that they want you to draw. On a daily basis, how are you supposed to remain pure? How are you supposed to abstain from lust with this going on? Now, here's the first thing that we want, that we want to help our, our brethren to realize. Our Christian universities, they are not our 
They are not ours and they are not Christian schools. Now here's, here's the evidence for what it is that we're promoting at this point. Is this a problem with the art, art studios, studio art in our Christian universities? Notice the trends. This is from the Christian Chronicle, December 26, 2017. Let me zoom in. I know you can't see that. It's very, very tiny on their website. 2017, just, just last year, just one month ago. Notice what the, the title is. Christian uni universities feeling the pinch as churches of Christ shrink. Sharp decline seen in number of freshmen who identify with the numerically declining fellowship. Our, Christ our Christian universities are starting to report that there is a great decline in young people that are members of, they say, associate with that identify with this declining you know this declining fellowship this this declining group the article says since today's college freshmen infants notice here let me get it just right there you go that'll do since today's college freshmen were infants roughly 1200 churches of Christ in the United States have closed and the number of men, women, and children in the pews nationally has shrunk by 200,000. So basically what they're presenting is these 18-year-olds that are coming in as freshmen, 18, 19, 17-year-olds, when they were infants, or from the time that they were infants, let's say two to three years old, now they're 17, 18. Notice what's happened to the Churches of Christ. They declined. Churches of Christ have closed. Number of men, women, and children in the pews nationally has shrunk by 200,000. So if you have churches of Christ shrinking across the nation, then what's that going to do to the attendance at Christian universities? Well, they're not going to be filled up with members of the church. And the article is going to go on to say that in the same 18-year period, universities associated with the fellowship from from Abilene University in Texas to York College in Nebraska have seen a 51% decline in students who identify with Churches of Christ. Within an 18-year period, they have declined over, I mean, it's, it's over half. Over half the student population in these Christian, so-called Christian universities. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you, you know from watching our broadcasts with the grave air that we've done, Abilene Christian University is not in fellowship with the Churches of Christ. Producing women preachers, allowing women preachers to come in and speak on their lectureships, bringing in uh, denominational preachers to speak on their lectureships, using mechanical instruments and music in their chapel. On just all, these, all these problems that are going against the doctrine that we have recorded in the New Testament. Abilene is not a part of our fellowship. They, have, I mean, they are certainly withdrawn from. They need to get themselves together. But, and that's, that's a, another crucial point that we're needing to consider at this point. Here is the Christian Chronicle. As one member of the Lord's Church in Tennessee put it, if you want to know what the liberals are up to, you read the Christian Chronicle. Not a, you know, not a source of conservative news within the brotherhood. If these brethren in the liberal factor, those that are not holding true to what, what the biblical standard is, what the doctrine is, if they are now writing about this decline within the Lord's church and they are pointing out some concern about this, shouldn't that cause more brethren to be concerned? It may be the case we've got a lot of conservative brethren out there and they're thinking, oh, the church is doing fine. In fact, one year... Uh, for the Memphis lectures. I don't know if this was exactly you know, the theme all throughout the lectures, but I think it was centered around the Church of Christ. One of the students presented a chapel sermon, and it's about the Church of Christ alive and well. You're deceiving yourselves. You are fooling yourselves if you're thinking that the Church of Christ, I mean, it's alive, but man, it is not doing well. As the you know, as liberals are are purporting to us or reporting to us, ladies and gentlemen, Dad, I mean, just the, I mean, I can just I can look back to or think back to some of the past shows that we had replay 
while we were gone for you know for the holidays, I had, I listened through them to make sure that you know the quality was good. There was no uh, bleeps or you know blackouts in the middle of the uh, recording. And I'm hearing Dad. You know these are sermons from when he first got up here, and he's guess what he's promoting. He's what he's presenting. If the churches of Christ do not start doing more, start getting out and being involved in the community, evangelism, trying to help these denominational folk, we're not going to survive. And now look at where we are. Here we are, 2017, and the liberals are telling us, you're on the decline. 51%, you're down 51%. The majority, 51% of those individuals on college campuses on Christian campuses are not associated, will not identify with Church of Christ. Just, uh, just 2,177 freshmen who enrolled at 14 such universities in fall 2017 gave their religious affiliation as Church of Christ, down from 4,411 in fall 2000, a national survey found. So, in saying, okay, I want my child to go to a a college, a school that's associated with the Church of Christ, and you're thinking, well, okay, we've got Harding, we've got Lipscomb, O.C., Abilene, and even, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, we're going we're gonna to bring Faulkner into it. They're in the Christian Chronicle, reporting the Christian Chronicle. These are not Christian schools because Christians are not going there. So that completely defeats the idea, oh, well, I want to send my child, I'm a, you know, I'm a member of the Lord's Church, and I've got a child, I want to spend, send my child to a campus that's going to be a good influence because the majority of the people there are going to be Christians. That's not even the case anymore. These schools are being overrun by non-members, by liberal factions coming into the faculty, and they're not upholding the doctrine, and they're not going to, you know, they're not going to protect your child in any, you know, in any situation. Now, Here's an article from 2010, and guess what they're writing about in 2010? Trends in freshman enrollment. Church of Christ universities drawing fewer students from within fellowship. Oh, well, we, need to, we need to support our brotherhood schools. We need to be sending our children to, to Church, of, Church of Christ universities. That's just not the case anymore. Something is going on to where... You have, you're having an influx as to you know, what's actually transpiring here. Now I want to jump ahead to what, what was happening at, at Faulkner. At Faulkner University, 31% of freshmen identified with Churches of Christ in fall of 2009. Now we've dealt with 2017. We've gone back to 2010. Now this is 2009. Look at what's happening. 31% identified with Churches of Christ. 36 claimed a different affiliation. So community church, Baptist church, you know, Methodist, Episcopalian, I mean, just whatever. Different affiliation. 33% cited no religious preference or marked other. Who, I mean, this is, people look at this, our brethren look at this, say, oh, Faulkner's a brotherhood school. The majority are non-Christians. So how do we think about, how are we thinking now, and this is, that's what this is designed to do. We started with the Huffington Post talking about studio art in Christian colleges and how they're struggling to bring about a, a balancing act. It's a touchy subject. Our brethren think, oh, that's not happening in the Church of Christ. That's just, you know, that's the denominations out there. But what, is, what does this information do to your thinking now? We do not even have the majority in these schools any longer. So why would we begin to think that this is not going to be an issue in these other schools? The Huffington Post article said the influx of these young people wanting to go to these Christian colleges is part of the reason why these universities are struggling with the art department because you have more young people coming into these universities and what are they wanting to study? They're wanting to study art. And the only way to accommodate those degrees is to incorporate studio art where you have to be involved in drawing and reproducing nude or partial nude works. 
if our Christian schools are going to be accredited in these fields like these other institutions, guess what they're going to have to do? They're going to have to do that very same thing. And brethren, we do not hold the majority in these schools. Our representation in these schools are on the decline. We jump backwards to something, uh, some other articles here. They, the Christian Chronicle references Abilene, 51% decline in students who affiliate, who identify with the Church of Christ. Well, Harding, this is from the 2010, no, this is actually 2017 article. Harding University actually wrote an article in their paper, The Bison, in 2009. How that Abilene Christian University undergoes changing religious climate. Now, what do they mean by that? Well, let's just read a little bit of the article here. It's our intent to continue our strong recruitment effort. Let's see, actually, I missed something here. I think I had a either a slide get out of place. Here it is. Sorry about that. Out of out of order. Here's the beginning of the article. For the first time in 103 years. Abilene Christian University in Texas is prepping to support a student body with a Church of Christ minority. The university, identified with the Church of Christ, has seen its freshman affiliation with the Church of Christ drop to 43% in the past two years. So in 2009, they're going back to, excuse me, 2007, 2008, they're seeing this transpire. The trend, however, does not overtly concern ACU's president, which is his former president now, Royce Money, who said in an ACU news story, I see it as a great opportunity to broaden our influence and our scope if it means more people are being attracted to ACU because of its high academic standards and the blend of Christian orientation. Now, <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. Money is not overtly concerned because he sees it as a great opportunity to broaden our influence. Now, here's what's interesting about, about this, this information coming out of Harding. The reason why we have this information coming from Harding is because we actually could not find this new story that Harding is actually quoting from. If you notice here, ACU news story is in yellow. It kind of looks orange on my screen. Is in yellow. You're supposed to click that to go to a link from where this is actually being pulled from, the, the real story. And for some reason, ACU took it down. We're trying to get to the bottom of, okay, how does ACU actually feel about it? Harding is quoting them and saying, well, they're not overtly concerned. And from what they quote, it seems to be the case. Well, it doesn't really seem like ACU is too worried about what the churches of Christ are doing, that they're not coming, that they're just happy with having these denominational folk come in and take, you know, take the run over a brotherhood school. Money says, uh, Money also said that despite the number, ACU remains committed to its Church of Christ roots. Well, we know that's not the case. You can just uh, visit the YouTube channel and find, you know, find that out. So then Ace, uh, excuse me, Harding asked the question, does ACU shifting religious climate signal a change on the horizon for Harding's student body? Harding President David, uh, Dr. David Burke said no. Sign that the university primarily recruits students from the Churches of Christ. Notice here. It's our intent to continue our strong recruitment efforts from Churches of Christ, Burke said. We do recognize that the number of 18-year-olds in Churches of Christ is declining slightly. This just points to our, our need to aggressively pursue these students. About 78% of Harding's current undergraduates identify with Churches of Christ, according to Marty Spears, Assistant Vice President for Academic Affairs. Roughly 75% of this year's freshman class pledged this same allegiance. Burke said, research suggests that if students connect with a local church, they're more likely to remain affiliated with that church upon graduation. Dr. Flavel uh, Yeakley, professor of Bible and religion, said he believed that is a reason why Harding has retained his Church of Christ identity by stressing that students become actively involved in local churches. Now, what I'm finding from these articles, from the Christian Chron Chronicle, the Harding or the Bison, connected the Department of Communication Student Media Network at Harding University is they're looking at this as well this is just you know we're, we're staying connected to it in fact the 
uh, the Christian Chronicle writes about it as, it's if a, as, is, as if it is a partisan-like movement, kind of like Republican and Democrat. Well, I associate myself as Democrat, so I'm going to always, always vote Democratic. Republicans the same way. Well, I'm a member of the Church of Christ, so I'm going to you know, always try to, you know, to support the Church of Christ. And they're saying that that partisan idea is actually on the decline. If that's how you're viewing the Church of Christ, then yeah, it's going to go down. It's going to decline. Because as is presented in the Optimist, the Abilene Christian University paper, they want to talk about you know, the Church of Christ heritage. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not something that is you know, just, oh, well, this is my heritage and that you know, my dad's involved in it. His, you know, his parents were involved in it. His parents' parents or you know, however long different individuals want to go with it. It's just part of my heritage. The Church of Christ is divine. It's from God. It goes beyond my bloodline being in it, and I was not born into the Church of Christ. So even there, it doesn't have anything to do with my heritage. I'm going to be born again so as to be brought into this fellowship with God and with His Son and being brought into, you know, into this body. But as we're considering here with the optimists, notice, notice what the Abilene paper goes on to say about it. Student religious diversity increases, and they even put a pie chart on here for us. I really do appreciate that because that's going to be that's going to come in handy. November 2013, the Church of Christ demographic within ACU stands in a uh, students is in a, a slow decline, according to religion headcount provided by Lisa McCarty, assistant director of the Office of Institutional Research and Assessment and the Institutional Researcher for the University. 54.6 percent of the student body claimed to be Church of Christ in 2009. Now you see right there is a problem. I'm not Church of Christ. I am not Church of Christ like you might be Baptist. I am a Christian and I am a member of the Church of Christ. So as far as what Abilene, you know, as to what Harding said that Royce money is not overtly concerned, we're going to find out why that is in just a moment from this article from the, you know, from the Optimist. Uh, as of fall this year, only 41.9% of students have declared a Church of Christ background. Kevin Campbell, the chief enrollment officer, said religious diversity among the students is increasing. All right. We see, he goes on to say, Mr. Campbell goes on to say, we see a tremendous amount of interest from families who have not grown up historically in the Church of Christ. And notice how he describes these families. But families who have strong Christian roots. So in Abilene... They do not consider just members of the Lord's Church, just members of the Church of Christ as being Christians. But you have families outside of the church who have strong Christian roots and are in strong families of faith who want their children or even students who want to be a part of a community like this. He said, we are seeing a lot of interest from the, notice this, broader Christian community in Texas. Is Abilene concerned with it? No. Because the Church of Christ, they're not the only Christians. There's a broader Christian community out there that we're able to pull from and that we're able to influence. Church of Christ, notice this is still the same article. This is Campbell speaking, and notice what he says. Church of Christ is still our primary denomination here on campus. Our Christian schools, what are, you know, what are they thinking? The Church of Christ is very important to us. It is our heritage. It's not our heritage. It's biblical. It's doctrinal. It's the only true church. So we're looking at the Huffington Post and we're, we're thinking, well, that's not dealing with us. But here we are, Harding, Abilene, Lipscomb and what's happening? What are we realizing? Uh, we're beginning to realize, okay, and these, you know, these, and some might even look at these and say, well, they're, you know, they're still far out there. They're practically gone. Uh, they're denominational in their thinking. This still doesn't have anything to do with us. Well, let's go a little bit further. Let's bring it home. What about sound schools? And I have a audio clip here to play for us. What about? those that we would consider as still being sound and conservative that's going to protect the faith of our young people. Um, 
whenever we hear somebody that is trained at ACU, a flag goes up. And it used to be a good school. And so the guy that went there in, in the 1960s, it might be different than the guy that's today. But I, I hear too many more stories about where Abilene's graduates go. And uh, some of their students go to community churches. That's what they're doing. And uh, it's sad but true that when you... Uh, you look at our, our Now, this is Jay Lockhart on the board of Freed Hardeman, and he's talking about Abilene Christian. Before anybody gets up in arms about, well, it's Church of Christ, they just want to talk about folk, want to run these other schools down, listen. We're going out, doing the evidence. I mean, if you saw my internet browser, look at all the, the tabs that I have. Well, you actually can't see it. It's zoomed in too much. So let me see if I can zoom out. I've got tab upon tab upon tab. Harding but Bozeman went a step further. He said everything we're reading in the New Testament is myth. That was going to be a clip I was going to play, but it didn't want to work. And I guess now it decided to work. I've got tab after tab after tab from Christian Chronicle, Harding Papers, Abilene Papers, if, you know, Freed Hardman information. What are we doing? We're trying to gather up evidence. What's Jay Lockhart doing? Well, I'm hearing war stories. Why does he get to talk about war stories and then when we want to give you evidence, we get raked over the coals about it? Now, what he's saying is accurate about ACU. Man, there's some terrible stuff coming out of ACU, but what we want to get to at this point, that's a little, little excursion there, what we want to get to is about our sound schools. You know what I mean? It's, um, it's hard to find somewhere you want to send your kids. They're not being as careful as they need to be. No. Yeah, and that's, that, that was what was bothering me. So, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, Freed Harmon is one of the last bastons for, for being on the right track. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, Freed Harmon is one of the last bastons for, for being on the right track. Yeah. And as far as I'm concerned, Freed Harmon is one of the last bastons for, for being on the right track. Yeah. And we've got to keep it that yeah. way. So Freed Harmon, I mean, he says what he wants to about ACU. I'm fine with that. I've got the information about ACU. He wants to bring up Freed Hardman, the last bastion of soundness, of conservativeness. And we've got to keep it that way. Not only Jay Lockhart here, what about Phil Sanders? Notice what Phil Sanders has to say about Freed Hardeman in this conversation here. Notice what he brings up. Phil Sanders writes and he says, I had a daughter who majored in art at, a at FHU, Freed Hardeman University. Here we are, talking about the art department. I wonder what's going on here. I was more than uh, once in that area. I saw nothing inappropriate. If you know something, approach FHU. If you have only hearsay, then I don't want to hear it. So, Jay Larkart, Freed Harmon's the last, last sound bastion in our brotherhood. Phil Sanders, I had a daughter that went through FHU, art department. I didn't see anything wrong. So if you have anything, you need to approach the Freed Harmon University about it. If you have only hearsay, then I don't want to hear it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what we want to inform our brotherhood about is some information coming from brethren who have done research about what is happening at the Freed Hardeman Art Department. Huffington Post is writing about Christian universities, Christian colleges struggling in their art departments dealing with studio art. Now, this is an online petition that we're wanting to let our brethren know about and um, in the control room I might have to zoom this in so much that if you can actually uh, get rid of me from the picture. It may work out better. Actually, I think, I, never mind, this, this is going to work. This is an online petition that we're wanting our brethren to be aware of. And we're going to advertise this on our Facebook pages. Uh, I believe it's going to be linked up with this YouTube show. And it's dealing with the last sound school and its art department. 
And these brethren have put the information together for us, and they're wanting to sign this petition and to share it around, and this is what, this is what we have happening. It's bleeding down, ladies and gentlemen. Parents currently sending their children to Free Harmony University may be surprised to learn that over the past 10 years, certain faculty members in the art and photography classes have made it a mandatory practice for students to view, study, and reproduce in the art class nude pictures in order to receive a degree. Now here we started with the Huffington Post and brethren are probably thinking there's, there's no way, there's no way that's talking about our schools. But ladies and gentlemen, we've tracked it down. Secular schools, our brotherhood schools have departed. Those that we consider to be sound, Faulkner, doesn't even have a majority Christian uh, group in it. And now here we are with Fried Hardeman, the last, the last one according to, to Jay Lockhart. The study of such images, let me see here, right here. The study of such images have included themes associated with sensuality, eroticism, homosexuality, and other lascivious materials. Additionally, contemporary nude photographs are being shown in the photography classes and, in one instance, a girl was asked by a fellow student to take off her clothes down to her bra and short shorts for a, quote, risque picture that was then submitted as a project assignment for the Digital Photography Fundamentals class although such was not required by the teacher. The teacher then showed this to the entire class on November 1, 2017. Students who conscientiously object to having to view or reproduce such works are either badgered by their teachers or simply, or simply told, pornography is in the eye of the beholder and if you can't handle it, drop out. There is little doubt that this is a departure from the vision of FHU founders who recognize the Bible as the inspired and authoritative Word of God and who sought to present Jesus as the model for personal behavior. For indeed, such sentiments still remain as the stated goals of the university on their webpage. While they tout about being a Christian university that provides a higher education with a Christian perspective, the fruits being produced, Matthew 7.20, stand in stark contrast to their claims. For over a year now, all attempts to correct these errors have fallen on deaf ears, included the teachers involved, the department leaders, the provost, two presidents, and even the elders supposedly shepherding the Christians involved. This plea is therefore being sent out in order to put an end to this ungodly practice. It is high time for concerned Christians to make their voices heard. Please join this effort and help stop these practices by signing the petition below and sending a strong message to the leadership of Freed Harmon University that such ungodliness will not be tolerated. May God's people not be ignorant of Satan's devices in our generation, 2 Corinthians 2.11, but rather stand against the wiles of the devil, Ephesians 6.11, as is written, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Now, my brethren, we have J. Lockhart saying, it's the last sound school. Yeah. Phil Sanders says, my daughter went through the art department, I did not see anything wrong, and if you do have something wrong, approach FHU. We have this information on this website for the petition where it is being shown that brethren, brethren have for a year tried to take this to the people, the people that are in charge. And what's happening is falling on deaf ears. And we're wanting to get this information out there. We're wanting to help these brethren. We want you to sign this petition. Watch our Facebook, our Facebook pages. We're watching our walls. Links will be coming very soon. Because we are wanting to, I mean, we're wanting to have sound brethren. We need to get behind this movement. We want to keep our schools, our schools. We need to be more involved. So there again, we're, we're pushing this idea of involvement. Do not sit back and think, well, I'm over here and, you know, these schools are way over here. What good am I, you know, what good am I going to be able to do? Because of the internet and the availability of information, you're able to learn so much about what's going on in these schools. Just watch, just watch the lectureships, some of the lectureships, and you'll learn a lot about what's happening in these schools. And then speak out against it. 
My brethren, if you're concerned about this, sign this petition and then share it with others that are going to be concerned. Because we're wanting to take this. I mean, these brethren that have put this petition out there, there's also a website forthcoming. I'm hoping, you know, very shortly to, to be notified by these brethren that they have developed a website that has all the correspondence over the past year as to, you know, what the issue is and so that we can further be, you know, properly informed. And this is being done by brethren how that, you know, this is being done by brethren, Tennessee, Oklahoma, Florida, even brethren outside of the United States who are learning about this and they're putting this petition together. And the, the name of the petition, if you want to go to ipetitions.com and then you want to search for a FHU Uncovered. That's the, the name of the petition that you're wanting to sign. ipetitions.com then search FHU Uncovered. If that's too difficult, again, just watch, be watching our Facebook pages. We'll be reposting this show and we'll be posting a link along with it that will take you right to this page. All you have to do is just, uh, as you can see here where I'm standing, you sign your name, you put your email address, and if you want to put a comment, you can do that. No, you're not having to give any funds, nothing like that. All we're wanting is we're wanting to present to these brethren that, you know what, there is a united front on this. Now, we're not simply wanting to, uh, you know, put this idea out there, okay, the majority is going to rule. The majority can be wrong, but we're wanting to get enough people that are going to back what the Bible says about purity, modesty, you know, abstaining, refraining from lust. I mean, the very fact that the Bible teaches that we're supposed to abstain from evil and we're supposed to eschew evil, I mean, to, to run strongly from evil, flee youthful lust, and then our brethren are going to be involved in, you know, in, this, in, this type of, in this type of material. You might have been thinking, well, you know what? It hasn't gotten that bad. Brethren, it has gotten that bad. The denominational realm, the secular realm has, has crept. I mean, it's not crept in. It's basically kicked the door in at this point. Our schools are no longer our schools. Young people are coming in and they're having an influence over these institutions. I mean, rules that were in place so as to help curb back the problems that you would normally have on a, you know, on a college campus, they're being altered. Because why? Because students are complaining. Now, Harding, in their article, I believe from 2009 or 2010, while ACU is seeing a decline, Harding is saying, oh, but we're, we're staying pretty strong. We've got 75%. But listen, you might have 75%, but that doesn't make you sound. In fact, if you go and do your research about Harding University, which we have, they cater to the 25% that are not Christians. They will bend and they will buckle and they will submit and they will compromise so as to cater to that 25% because guess what? Well, we can't lose that tuition. We can't just simply hold to what the Bible says and Bible standards and cut ourselves off from all those young people that want to you know, learn about art. Art, supposedly. We need their money. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to promote ourselves as a, you know, as the last, last bastion, bastion, or however he pronounced it as, of soundness and assertiveness, while at the same time involved in promoting undoctrinal, unscriptural, and impure thoughts. And the book, we have, or these, excuse me, these brethren, I don't have it, these brethren that are putting on this petition and that have this, are working on this website, they have the book, the reading material that these students were being made to read. 
with the pictures that were in this book. And the information that I'm getting about it, I, I haven't seen what it was. I believe my wife has seen it. It's just, I mean, it's horrendous as to what Fried Hardeman is putting in his classes that is promoting his art, but in fact, just all kinds of nudity, as, as was mentioned here, homosexuality, eroticism, sensuality. Yeah, that's exactly what we need young people in their teens thinking about. Having, you know, flash before their eyes all the time. It's bad enough. Now, ladies and gentlemen, just consider this. You cannot even drive down the road without having some type of impure, provocative image or phrase on a billboard. It's on billboards, it's on the radio, it's on television. I mean, it's all over the place. And then we're, we're supposedly sending our young people to an area that's supposed to protect them and keep them from these type of things and look at what they're being, being made in order to get a degree, what they're being made to view. The type of thing that we're sending them, we're sending them to this place so as to get away from these things. We're needing to speak out. More and more brethren need to be made aware of this. Now, now what is this? Again, we love these, we love these brethren. We do not want to see them involved in this. We do not want them hurting these young people. And they are hurting these young people. I mean, you've got young folks that are coming in here to Freed Hardeman, and, and guess what? They're struggling with pornography. And then they have to take an art class. And what's being flashed before them? Nudity. Oh, but it's, you know, it's, in the, it's classy. It's not, de, it's not debasing the human form. It's glorifying God's creation. No, it's nakedness. Nakedness is to be shameful. It's supposed to make you ashamed. It's supposed to make you want to cover up. When Adam and Eve realized they were naked, what was the first thing they wanted to do? They wanted to cover up. But over at Fried Hardeman, we're getting information in, this, in, these, in desiring to be like the world and being able to educate these young people as to what the world standard is this is what they're being subjected to. And in fact, I mean, the very, I mean, the very fact that you have this word over here, sensuality, I mean, that's, that's what Paul writes about in dealing with the Gentiles. How did they walk? They walked in sensualness, in sensuality. And Paul says, you've come out of Gentile behavior and come into the body of Christ. And yet this is what's going on at our last sound school. If you have problems, take it to those in charge at these institutions. Homosexuality, sensuality, eroticism. I mean, they just, I mean, gen, I mean genitalia. Brethren, I wanted to make sure I used a big enough term to where any young folk that might be watching the show, it kind of will buzz over their head. That's what's going on in this, in this book that these children, these children, these young folk are being forced to, to view and being able to reproduce, supposedly, I mean, uh, supposedly being able to reproduce, or that they are being made to reproduce so as to be able to get a degree. Ladies and gentlemen, brethren, the hour is late. The reason why I had Keith Mosier ready to play is because he's in a either in a lectureship or in a gospel meeting, he's talking about what he dealt with at Harding University graduate uh, school. When I was there listening to Keith Mosier, he was still talking bad about Harding University. And then in that same speech, in that same discussion, he brings up the point. It's interesting how that all of the Church of Christ schools in the 19th century that were established in the 19th century, they apostatized. Or they apostatized. And then he says, and we're catching right up with them in the 20th century. It's happening before our very eyes and we need to put a stop to it. ipetitions.com, FHU, uncovered. You can find the links on our Facebook pages. Uh, we'll try to attach to this YouTube show so you can find it there. Sign the petition. 
leave your comment and pass it along. This information needs to get out. Be looking out for the uh, upcoming website. We'll be sure to advertise that as soon as, as soon as it's up and going. Ladies and gentlemen, brethren, we thank you for tuning in. We pray that this information is beneficial for you, helping you to stay informed, abreast as to what's happening in our brotherhood so that we can turn the tide, help our young people, and help save and restore the Lord's Church to what it's supposed to be in that being found in the New Testament. If we can assist you, give us a call, email us, whatever you would like. Thank you for watching. Always ask for what does the Bible say.